In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, I'll teach you how to create a very simple Werkstatt logo in Photoshop. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me over at tronicsdesign.com. So in this week's tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a Werkstatt logo. It's going to include some fonts, some shapes and some cool backgrounds. So yeah, if you're lazy like me, just have a look down below in the description is a link to the Tronix Design Media Package. Also guys, I know I haven't been here for quite a long while, please excuse, I was busy building an epic studio called Pro Studio. I will include a vlogging episode onto this channel very soon. But yeah, enough about me, let's head right away into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, first of all on the right hand side, you guys can see here we have two groups. So the first group is the logo and basically just creating the logo and the second one here, just the background. Now, let's open the background quickly and talk quickly about this. I'm not going to show you how to create this. We have done this in many tutorials. So let me quickly explain to you what we have done here. Also, if you are interested to learn more about this, please have a look. There are some beginner tutorials teaching you about canvas size and also get going with the background. First of all, you can see here I've added just a normal workshop kind of looking like picture and yeah, a wood workshop if you can call that. Then also we have this as a smart object with some smart filters. Let me explain this quickly to you. If you would have a normal layer, just a normal picture layer, hit right click on here and say convert to a smart object. Now this layer is a smart object that also has this little icon down here and you can apply smart filters. What this means is you can double click onto this and also tweak the filters afterwards. Once you've applied them, you can always tweak them afterwards. So let me show this quickly to you. You can see here I have the Gaussian blur there selected. Let's double click and right away the window opens again and I can retweak again my picture. Now let's turn it off. That's the before and after. If you want to understand more about this and want me to create a tutorial, please leave it down below in the comment section if you want to learn more about smart objects. Great, so that was basically just putting a bit of a contrast and a Gaussian blur onto the picture. Then I did a smart objects with curve here, uh, sorry, an adjustment layer with some curves. I'll just try to push the highlights a little bit here, pushing them up a little bit so the background pops a bit. Then on top of that, just a bit of a great layer. We applied this on multiply and opacity as well. So it's just a bit darker. Obviously you can also just take a black or a gray normal layer, basically meaning completely a complete new layer, maybe rename it to gray. And then, all right, let me do this correct. Gray, there we go. You can also take the marking tool with command A, all the Windows users, please if I say command, you have to use control. So command A selects the whole canvas. You're gonna hit right click, Fill this up with maybe black or gray. You can also choose a color here and pick maybe a grayish color, maybe a little bit darker, say OK, OK, and right away you have this layer. Press Command D to get out of the selection. Again, all the Windows users, please press Control when I say Command. Now, the layer is still normal. Select this to multiply and also take down the opacity. Obviously, you have to switch off this, otherwise it's duplicated. So 85, somewhere around here, 81. See, it's almost a similar effect that you're getting with this layer. So actually, let me delete our gray layer here again. And that's basically the background, how I started out with that. Now, let's start right away with the logo. First of all, what I'll do is go to View. And I'm going to create so quickly some guides. So I'm going to select New Guide, select Vertical. And I'm just going to type here 50%. So I'm going to do one in the middle. And again, view, new guide, and horizontally also 50%. Great, so we've created now two guidelines. This helps us again to obviously place our logo nicely in the center. Let me also turn this off here so I can quickly and easily show you how you can get started now. So I do get a lot of inspiration in the internet as well from especially the shapes like these. Or you can also have a look in our Tronics Designs media package. You can get all the shapes, PSDs, backgrounds, brushes, everything you need is bundled up there for you. So you don't need to recreate what I am doing or if you just want to get quicker into things, right? All right. So first of all, I'm going to go to the tool panel box here. I'm going to select custom shape tool and I'm going to open the shapes over here. So you guys can see I have a ton of shapes that you can also get in the Tronics Designs media package. Again, all the way at the bottom is the latest shape that I've created. 
If you want to learn more about this, please have a look. There's a tutorial on the channel teaching you how to do it on your own, a custom shape with the pen tool. It's a full tutorial how to do this. I want to save a bit of time and not bore the uh, regular viewers with this technique. So for all the new ones, please have a look there on the channel. So I've selected now obviously this new shape that we have created here. If you're in the Tronics Designs media package, you'll get it there. Great, I'm going to press now shift on the keyboard so it's equally expanding and I'm also going to try to make it the similar size. Obviously I'm copying now a little bit here, my old size, so let me just do it once again, like so, and I'm going to move it a little tiny bit into the center here. Okay, let me just select the shape and right away it is on the same spot. Okay, let me turn off the logo layer here so we can actually see it. So right away you guys can see here is the shape and we've gotten now the nice shape around where we're going to create a logo. Okay, next step would be for me, let's open here quickly. So you can see I've also did everything in a similar separate blocks. We did the text on its own, we did the bolts on its own, then the spike, spike top of the, and the frame. Okay, so the frame we've already created. So let's maybe head now back into doing the spikes. You can either also do that now manually or you can go back to the shape library and get it over there. Let me select the new layer over here. I'm going to rename that quickly to shape so you guys also know what's going on. Okay, and rename this to frame. It's also a smart object, as you can see, a smart shape layer actually. Okay, I'm going to go to this shape and we're going to replicate now obviously these two spikes. So how I will do it is take the pen tool. I'm going to press P on the keyboard and maybe we can actually drag down another guideline here. You guys can also see I have the rulers here at the top. It's very easy, just go to view and select your rulers over here if you don't have that. Okay, I'm gonna zoom a little bit down. I'm gonna make a new guideline here and on the left hand side, just check that I'm pretty much on my rulers. Okay, make another spot over here that looks quite thick. Maybe this is about a centimeter. Okay, I'm going to take another guideline and this is just to quickly help me get things going. Okay, I'm going to make it a bit longer, say like so. Okay, the, sh the shape looks quite long. Let's take another guideline, I'm going to place it in the middle. So this is obviously just to help me make the shape really, really quickly. Again, all the regular viewers might know about this, the new ones will learn something now. Let me zoom in, so I'm going to press P on the keyboard, put an anchor point, put another anchor point, another anchor point and another anchor point. So basically you created a small little triangle on a new shape layer. Okay, let's hit right click in there, say make a selection, zero feathering please, okay. And with M on the keyboard, I'm gonna select right away into the marking tool, hit inside of the selection, right click and say fill. I'm gonna fill this up with a white foreground color, hit okay and press Command D to get out of the selection. So if I zoom out now, I've created a little triangle really quickly. Okay, I'm gonna also select now again the Move tool and just quickly remove these guidelines. You can literally just click on them and drag them out. Okay, and like so, just drag them out of the canvas. Now we have our shape layer. I'm gonna move that back to the top, press Command T in order to get into the transform mode. And I'm just gonna wait here till I have this rounded curve arrow and I'm rotating them a little bit. Okay, then move them into position, like so. I'm going to press Command J in order to duplicate. Again, Command J and all the Windows users, Control J for you. Then Command T and again rotate this and right away we have another shape over here. So let me first of all turn off here under the logo the spike top because currently I can't see what I'm doing. So first spike, I'm happy with that. Let's place it here. Second spike, I'm happy like that. Actually, let me press again Command T and rotate just a slightly bit more. Nice, so obviously this is, you judge this via the eye. I'm also not doing this too carefully. I'm rushing quite through it to, to not keep this tutorial too long. Okay, both of these layers, I'm gonna keep them right here. And again, press Command G now to put them together in a group. So let's call them spikes. Great, let's actually take frame, press also Command G and just write here frame. Great, so now we have spikes and frame. Let's head over to our lay here. What else did we do? We did some spikes down at the bottom. Super easy to do that. You can just take the spike group over here. Press Command J in order to duplicate the layer. Let me just write spikes bottom. So we might know where those go. I'm gonna open the group, take the shape out of here, all the way down. Press Command T in order to just make it straight again. 
great like so. Let me also then go down and place them somewhere randomly over here. If you want, you can actually delete the shape copy too now and just duplicate the one that we've already rotated. So command J, it's obviously the same way around. Let's just flip that. Again, go to edit, transform and say flip horizontally. Super easy, very quick. Okay, I'm gonna place them somewhere over here now because I'm still not sure where they exactly go. We will see that once we've added the text to this. Okay, like so, that's fine for now. Let me also now continue. We're gonna create again a new layer and let's call this the bolts. Okay, and we're gonna open this. I'm gonna to go to the elliptical marking tool and just quickly make a little small circle over here. I feel like this could be a nice size. Okay, and again, the same process, zoom in. I'm going to press M on the marking tool inside of the selection, hit right click and say fill with white foreground color. Okay, then command D, get out of the selection. I'm going to make again a new rectangular marking tool, select that. And now I'm just going to make a little cross over here, like so, little, little tiny one. Okay, hit delete, so obviously deleting those pixels. I'm going to press M now again to keep the same selection. Right click and just say transform selection. So where is it here? Transform selection. This means we can risk rotate it. Okay, like so. And let's see if it's in the middle. Obviously I'm rushing this guys. Take a bit more time when you do this. I'm gonna hit delete and command D get out of it. So it from far away it looks like a little tidy bolt there. Okay, let's have bolt. We can now also again go to the move tool and just move down a guide layer here. So we also placing them in the same position. Again, like I said, guys, I'm doing this quite quickly. Take a bit more time so your design is a bit more uh, equal and looks a bit better than mine. Okay, let's me move this over and we're gonna place it somewhere over here. I feel like it should go be a bit more there into the center actually, like so. So let me take my guideline up. Okay, I'm gonna press Command J, duplicate the bolt, and let's move that all the way over here, somewhere over here. And I'm gonna take both layers, press Command J, and move both layers down. So we obviously have then four bolts. Great, let's take all four bolts and press Command G, put that together in one final group and call it bolt. So again, you can find your stuff afterwards. I'm now going to take and erase just my two extra uh, layers here, not layers, my guides. Okay, also getting confused here. So I already have the bolts, I have the spikes. Last thing that we have to do is type out the Werkstatt, uh, basically the text. So this could be your logo, it could be your branding, it could be your company text, whatever it is. Okay, so the next step is now to create the text. So first of all, I'm going to go to the text tool over here and just put a click into the room. So basically just clicking once and I'm going to write now Werkstatt. So you can also write workshop, obviously this is the German version. So right away pressing Command A, selecting everything and I need to select the right font, which is already selected. So if you don't have that, please have a look for Dreamwalker Regular. Then I'm going to up my size now to around 40 for this, nice and big. I'm also going to have a look here at my character box. Again, guys, if you don't have the character box, please go to window and select the character box over here. I'm going to take my tracking from 0 to 20. And as well, I'm also going to create another warp effect on this. So we've never done this before. Let's select everything. We're going to go to this little T here that's on top of the mountain. That is warp text effect. So I'm first of all going to select the style and that will be bulge. And it's nice big there. But I'm going to take this down maybe to just plus 23. So let's, let me try 23. Okay. I obviously know the sizes because I tested it previously in the tutorial. Now, it's still a little bit too big. So let's just select T on the keyboard again. Select everything and I'm going to make it slightly smaller so it just fits in a little bit more. Like 38, somewhere over there. And I'm going to make it this tiny bit more smaller. Let's say 36. Okay, accepting that and move it a little bit up. Great, so that's super easy to create, super quick. You can do it with any font, any styles. Yeah, play a little bit around with this if you're new to this. Now, last step that I'll still do is just again, T on the keyboard, make a little selection here. No, you know what? I'm just gonna click into the room and actually also write established 2018. Great, with the same font, same style. I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller. Okay, like so. I can also see that the sizes are a bit different. So let me just select 2018. 
and make that slightly bigger so it fits with the established. So again, remember established is now font size 9 and 2018 is 10. So obviously the fonts are a bit different. Now let's place it also here at the bottom. I'm going to select it again and just make it a bit smaller overall. So let me select 8 actually and then again the same process 2018 needs to be 9. So one uh, pixel a bit bigger there, one text size. Okay, I'm going to place it here also in the middle, somewhere like that. And remember, we still have to move our spikes here at the bottom. So I'm just going to select the layer and with the move tool and the cursors left and right, move them a little bit into the space. Again, the shape also over here and move that into space. Great. Then last step would be just taking Werkstatt and establish 2018. Command G, put that together in a group and we can write text over here. And voila we have finished almost the whole logo. So a super easy tutorial to do. Last, last step I'll still do is check all of these layers, hold command or shift if you like, shift at the bottom and then the top and it selects all the groups, press command G again and put that together in a final logo group. So yeah guys, that's basically it for this week's Photoshop design tutorial. A super easy tutorial to understand how to do a Werkstatt logo in Photoshop. So yeah, if you're lazy like me and just don't want to create this, have a look down below in the description is a link again to tronicsdesigns.com and also a link straight to the Tronics Designs media package where you can get all the shapes, brushes, elements, everything that you need to get you going right from the start. So yeah, guys, have a look down below in the description. If you like this, hit me up with a like, leave a comment down below and I'll see you all in the next episode. See ya! And you're still here, so that means you're interested in some more tutorials. I mean, then wait no la longer, longer, longer. Just take your camera and like shoot it away. Take some photos and create some tutorials. This is normally the time when I just do some bullshit and sit here and wait for the editors to finally tell me, okay, Manny, cut, let's move on. <laughs>